Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. That raging inferno that's probably still burning, that is literally visible from space. The uh, TD Ameritrade burning their uh, records. Burning. I mean, they, supposedly it's accidental, but their whole warehouse, they burned their whole warehouse of records, and it was visible from space and 10 miles away. Sharp pieces, uh, little pieces of, of records were floating down to people's yards. That's connected to Citadel. The, there's a company called Hepico cleaning this up. Who, who's this Hepico business? What's this Hepico business? Uh, one of the, the people uh, that there's a connection to Citadel. We'll take a look at that. We will also take a look at uh, the crypto markets have been doing a little bit better. And it possibly is connected to the Super Bowl, which people are calling the Crypto Bowl. There's They uh, bought up all the a lot of the advertising, so there supposedly could be some support. So that supposedly could be a strong trend running into uh, the, the uh, Crypto Bowl or the Super Bowl, if you will. And then we'll look at the Big Mac Index. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, some, uh, some fun ways to, to perhaps uh, speculate on the Japanese and Australian markets. Uh, and we'll see why that might be a good idea with the Big Mac Index, which is kind of fun. Kind of fun. So let's... Do it. I'm not an investment advisor. This is not investment advice. I'm not a tax advisor. This is not tax advice. This is Tendies Club. Let's do it. Oh, please like and subscribe and chat and comment if you're in the future. Comments if you're in the future. We're all in somebody's future. Uh, uh, please like. We're on the live stream. Likes the like. The algorithm likes the like. So like. You're going to like liking that like. Let me tell you that. I like it. I like it. Alrighty. From the Twitter, the Twitterverse. This person says we don't need to we don't need to zoom all the way in for this one. That's what this person says. Who wants to play connect the dots? I've worked construction for 25 years in the area and don't recall coming across these company names. I took these pictures this morning at the never ending fire in Bartlett. AMC not leaving, never leaving. So there's Hepico. And then here is Hepico. Hepico. And then, uh, so then, maybe shell companies do secret illegal stuff. And this person says, LOL, like six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Too easy. Hepico is owned by Griffin Investors. Managing director is Jeff Rogers, former senior vice president at Citadel. You know, and I never, I didn't think of it until now, but on Rick and Morty, there's the Citadel. That's the, which is some of the best episodes. There's the Citadel, the, uh, the evil conspiracy place of the citadel that runs everything and it's all uh it's it's <laughs> it's 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 like the height of centralized awfulness powers so i wonder if they did that for ken for uh, ken's citadel but so connection to citadel to the to the td ameritrade fire hepico and so hepico and then the super bowl is being called the crypto bowl what am i doing what am i doing we haven't looked we haven't looked at the stocks. I, I forgive me, forgive me. We haven't looked at the stocks. Oh, the stockies. Waited two days for these. Uh, waited three days for the stocks to come back on. So cassava took a, it. It, it uh, dipped down to 46, 46.34, and recovered a buck around 10 o'clock. All the uh, small Alzheimer's stocks took a dip. Cassava was doing okay. Uh, it was actually lagging. It's usually it's been doing it's been beating the other small Alzheimer's Alzheimer's stocks lately, except for Cortexime. It's been uh, it, it's been beating everybody, especially Cortexime. And then today, Cortexime again was down, but the other ones were up a, a good bit. Uh, I think either A Novus or Anavex was up more than eight percent for a bit, and then they all took a tank around ten o'clock. And then IKT is hanging in there one thirty two. Uh, IKT issued an S3 earlier today. They did not, they're not, they did not issue shares, but they've got, they eventually they will, you know, they're, uh, they're in uh, phase one and two, phase two. Uh, they've got a bunch of stuff in clinics. So eventually, eventually we, when Milton, Dr. Warner spoke about, uh, when they might raise funds eventually. So he says they're, they're, uh, good through like phase three or they're good through, uh, a, a good long while. Anyway, uh, they've got like 40 million or so, but eventually they'll raise money and they filed that. And the Qs are down half a percent. The spies down quarter of a percent. Long bonds down slightly. Short bonds up ever so slightly. So the bonds are basically flat. How's gold doing? Gold 
<clears throat> Looks like it caught a little bit of a bit up a half a percent. The meme stock. So lately, cassava has been it's absence any uh, absence any options expiration and absence any uh, press releases of their own. It's been either Alzheimer's stocks or the meme stocks, and lately a little bit more meme stock uh, correlation. So GameStop's down two and a half percent today. AMC's down three percent today. Maybe that's the more of the story is the, why Cassava was down a, a good bit in the first place. But look at Cardano, 118. Now, it had been, it had been down into the 90 cents. This is, you know, Ada is my favorite altcoin. And then Bitcoin was hanging around 36, 37 after dipping down to 33 or whatever it was, 35. I think 35 this time around. But anyway, it, it recovered all the way to 43. And so this, this, uh, this recovery is supposedly tied to the crypto bowl crypto ads invade the super bowl super bowls being called the crypto bowl and oh look it's jay pal oh ah, i didn't mean for that to be there but uh there's there's gonna there's a lot of spending on on uh super bowl ads for the cryptoverse and supposedly that's going to be going to lead to some supposedly that's where that strength is coming from and who, who knows remember when elon musk went on saturday night live and then that was going to draw a lot of attention to, to bitcoin and, and crypto the cryptoverse uh, but it, so there was a then it basically doubled leading into Saturday Night Live, and then like right when Saturday Night Live basically played, it like cut cut in half. Like it, that was like the peak. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens here. But I thought that was interesting. And then there's those, we can have some fun with the Big Mac index. So what is the Big Mac index? Well, there's the uh, currencies and how they're valued in relation to each other. And then so you can track you can track the, how the how many what, what the currency values are in relation to each other how many yen you can get for a dollar or whatever it is, uh, but there's also uh, you can track over time uh, what a Big Mac costs and then you can track how that uh, how that uh, diverges from the currency valuation pairs and so if uh, if uh, a Big Mac is getting more expensive in one country and less expensive in another versus the the currency valuation perhaps that signals uh, that the one currency is overvalued and the one is undervalued. So a, a little bit of a, perhaps it has some validity, but I wouldn't put too much stock into it. But th 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 well, I just thought it was interesting. And so wanted to point out, so right now, there's only two uh, currencies that are uh, that are more overvalued, more overvalued than the dollar, if you go by the Big Mac index. You go by the Big Mac index. And so they are Norway's Krone and Switzerland's Franc. So me. Uh, zoom out a little bit here so we can get more of a complete picture. And do, do, do. Let me move myself again here. Whoa! Uh, geez, whiplash. I'm going to sue Tendy's Club. <laughs> All right, so, uh, the, so the franc and the krone, the Swiss franc and the, and the Norwegian krone look more overvalued than the dollar by the uh, Big Mac index. Everything else, it looks uh, like the, the dollar is overvalued, and by some people's estimations, the dollar is overvalued. Well, here's one estimation, uh, and so Australia is 22.4 percent undervalued. Australia's dollar is 22.4 percent undervalued versus the dollar by looking at the Big Mac index, and then uh, whoops, and then the yen is 40 percent. 41.7%. So the last two stocks I recommended, or the last two dividend-paying stocks I recommended were Art Vivant and, uh, no, two of the last, my well, last two foreign stocks I recommended were Elders and Art Vivant. Art Elders is a rural farm services Australian stock, which is a really possibly, what, what we're calling a great company. It gets great margins, it gets great returns, it has growth, but it's a great company in that it seems to operate in either an oligopoly or either a, or maybe even a monopoly, but it seems to be it seems to uh, get great uh, get returns as if it has little competition. So it's a great company, and then it's going for a good value. The PE was like twelve, or it was like under twelve. It had a really good bump after I talked about it. Finally, something I talked about went up. Uh, <clears throat> so now it's like twelve point two percent PE or whatever. But so the Australian play we really like. We just recommended as elders. And then there's Art Vivant in Japan. Well, the, the, so the yen, if you're looking for, if you, the yen is possibly very undervalued. Now, the yen has a lot of national debt, and like a lot, like a whole lot. But I mean, the dollar, we have a lot of, the United States has a lot of national debt, like a lot now too. So 
Uh, so the yen is possibly by the by the Big Mac index. The yen is undervalued. And then if you go with Art Vivant, that one has uh, more than its uh, more than its market cap uh, in in cash yen and art alone plus more. So it, it's go it's trading for like half a book value, and most of that is in cash and art by itself. So anyway, that's that's uh, Elders is the great company. Art Vivant is uh, the Japanese uh, extreme value company. EIG is the American. If you're looking, all three of those pay dividends. If you're looking for a dividend paying stock, if you want to get, uh, if you're afraid of this phantom share stuff. All right. And with all of that, my tendies, friendies, let's go back to the charts and back to the charts. I'm going to zoom out. Oh, come zoom, 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 zoom. There we go. And we'll go back to cassava and then we'll go to the phones. Cassava hanging just over 47. Well done. Recovering from the lows of 46. Ben in the discord, bottom ticked. IKT this morning at 126. Nice work there, Ben. And with that, my tendies, friendies, let's go to the phones. Go to the phones. Go to the phones. Magnificent. Their feet must be feeling fire with all that burning stuff going around, eh? I would say so, my friend. Shorties. Burning, you know how those shorties like to burn. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Kevin, that video thumbnail of Joe is hilarious. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's uh, I, I, I look for a good one. I'm uh, I've been I've been uh, getting behind in all my stuff. I uh, and, and it's all it's like I've been I was wanting to to uh, get ahead in all my grooming and my clothes and my fitness and and, and get some sun and, and all this stuff and I've been lazy or, or whatever so i've been trying to get a get ahead of all that stuff and so i don't like any of the pictures of myself is what i'm saying so i went back and i found one <laughs> so thank you my friend truthful i sent an email to my contacts at the large old age home where so you have to <laughs> these are for large large old age people i guess <laughs> large old age home where my pat my patents lived and before they passed and sent the link to alzheimer's trials i wonder what outreach saba is doing I don't know. I, I, that's the, the, I wonder, me too. And that's, that's definitely a place where we can help. And so truthful way to go. The uh, reaching out to large old people and small is a great idea. Uh, reaching out to patients and patents are, <laughs> is a great idea. No, this is exactly where we can come in and getting those trials enrolled is, is, is something that can, that can help the stock and the world. So a uh, way to go, my friend. You send an email to the contacts at this very large old age home where your patients uh, lived before they passed and sent links. Oh, your parents. I thought you were saying your patients. I'm sorry. Your parents. I'm so sorry, my friend. Where your parents uh, went before they passed away. And you sent them a link to the Alzheimer's. I wonder what they're doing, too. So uh, so uh, so sorry to hear about it. No wonder you're so passionate and uh, do such a great job, truthful. Your parents passed away so from this. So... Um, so sorry about. I'm so glad you uh, you did that. So that's that's something we can all do. We can reach out to these uh, caregiving homes and, and uh, caregivers. Uh, that's 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 something I was just reading about. Is that caregivers need help, and one of the things they need help with is getting patients enrolled. Just in general, not just Alzheimer's care patients, but caregivers in general need help. And the people, that, one of the things they need help with is the people they're giving care for, getting them enrolled in the right trials for whatever it is. And so that's where we can come in. So thank you, truthful. Hello, Joe. Hello, Jay. Rumble just offered Rogan $100 million to move over to their platform. Awesome. With no censorship. How much would you take to move? I would do it for $90 million. $90 million. Other than that, I am loyal to this, to my $0 contract at YouTube, and I'm not going anywhere for a penny under $90 million. <laughs> I, ho I hope he goes. I sure hope he goes. Johnny English. Good day, Joe. Any update on a possible T0 interview? Uh, the update is, no, there's not an update, but I, I haven't given up, uh, so uh, well, I'll get on it. So thank you for the reminder. Thank you, my friend. I'll get on it. Ryan D., Re uh, with regards to Cardano, the Ada coin, I noticed I received my meld airdrop 
pretty excited for it to become bigger. So you, well, you can you can go to that big old folks home. Uh, secured loans with no taxable events. Yeah. UG Capital on YT, on YouTube just made a great video. Also interested in Charlie. Uh, so probably Charles Hoskinson, of course. Ryan, way to go. Uh, so the meld airdrop, I don't know anything about it. Uh, these airdrops, you can you can participate in some projects early, and then you can get some coin for it. Uh, but I don't really know anything about. Uh, I don't. That's all. I really, I've never done it myself. So uh, please tell us more. That's really awesome. So again, Ada Coin is the, so. There's the Cardano network. That's what I happen to think is the best uh, crypto. You know, if you're we're trying to make a better society where it's a it's a level playing field for everybody, and you can have fair systems that keep people from doing the evil human nature that we can do, and uh, it's a fair system for everybody. And the people at the center, the centralized powers, can't screw everybody. And so we really like this idea that the, the all the systems that make up government and things like that, and and the stock exchange, every, everything, all systems are centralized right now, and the people at the center screw the people at the periphery. So we're really excited about this idea that uh, crypto can come and make better systems in every really really every way. And so the one the crypto uh, exchange, the crypto project that we like the best is Cardano. It was started by Charles Hoskinson. It, we like it best because it's peer reviewed. So Ethereum was also started and in part by Charles Hoskinson, and that was sort of move fast and break things, which is good. And then they can get like a you know they're ahead. And so that's that's possibly good, but they possibly they've also got like huge huge gas fees. If you've heard about that, they've got some big problems as well because they 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 what uh, what Cardano's doing is moving very slowly and writing a lot of papers that are peer reviewed. What is the very very best way to make a crypto system uh, with everything considered with de with decentralization and security? and speed what's the very best way to, to do things and so they they're, they're taking it very slowly and they're making a lot of progress so anyway that's my favorite project and so i'm really i'm really glad that you can uh, give us some of that uh first-hand knowledge ryan uh, we also have ben on here who's uh, uh ben and peter on here i know who also do things in uh, crypto and cardano universe they can clue us in as well thank you very much silver charm hopefully they find ken griffin's dental records among <laughs> No comment. So that's that's the person that uh, created Citadel and basically uh, is making money hand over fist. And uh, it's sort of sort of like heads he he wins, tails the system loses, and there's the systemic risk that you know too big to fail probably. So we've seen that movie before. Magnificent go rumble go that censorship censorship canceling people out has got to go and stop. I completely agree with you. Let's cancel canceling and censor censoring. <laughs> Let's cancel censoring and censor canceling. <laughs> I think uh, he Joe can run Simo on YouTube and Rumble. Oh, okay. Uh, Matt Kors does awesome. Then I'll do that. I, that, that. I will definitely do that. Thank you guys. I will run simultaneously on YouTube and Rumble. Rumble, totally awesome. Great to know. Thank you. Tom Lou, thank you for the Zim recommendation. Zim, uh, I guess it's up uh, some more. Zim is that uh, supply chain delivery dealie that was taking advantage of the supply chain, doing a good job taking advantage of the supply chain, up another 4% today. So to be honest, I didn't really recommend it. We just talked about it, but it's up. So I recommended this one and... Uh, and I'm glad you guys got in uh, on my recommendation. <laughs> so thank you, Tom. Or thank you, whoever brought up Zim. Thank you, whoever brought up Zim. Right. All you have to do is just open two tabs, each streaming, one on YouTube, one on Rumble, same camera. Totally awesome. That'd be hilarious if they made you film it twice. <laughs> no, no. You have to have two cameras, one for each. Kevin rocks. Why go to Rumble? Is Joe being censored on YouTube? Uh, who knows? I mean... I would I already, I, I already I would like to say more than I than I do, uh, but I don't know. I'm on on. They've already tried to uh, on. I've I've gotten alerts that they I've, they've tried to like uh, remove me from uh, Twitter just a couple times in Germany. Strangely, I don't know, or is it Germany or the Netherlands or something like that? Somewhere in Europe. Anyway, no, yeah, it's not not a big deal. But who knows? I mean, they're the 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 powers that be. They're the powers that we're up against. They're trying to stop these trials. They tried to sabotage the trials earlier. They they kept Provenge off the market. There's other examples as well. I don't have off the top of my head, but uh, they're I mean they're, they're trying to stop these trials. That's unconscionable. They'll, they'll do anything. So anybody talking about cassava in a good way is probably going to get attempt to be they'll probably attempt to deplatform them. 
And then talking about Citadel in a bad way. I mean, talking about the, the centralized powers in a bad way sooner or later. Uh, the Charles Hoskinson, by the way, who started uh, Cardano, he uh, he's, 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 he's got he's like a big he's got like a, a big following on YouTube. He's got he does ask me anything things. And his last update was not encouraging because the centralized powers are, are trying to criminalize this as everybody knew would happen. But they're basically winning. And his last update was like he was say, saying, like, maybe he'll just stay on his farm and get out of history's way. Oh, which I hated hearing that. And there's already three. There's millions of, of developers uh, in Cardano, it's like the most, uh, there's the mo- there's more Cardano tattoos than of any other crypto, uh, tattoos. So the, the, the developers are very, there's a whole, it doesn't, if he died, if he died, that would be awful, but Cardano would, would not be changed. It, it's already, it, it, it's, it's a worldwide decentralized project. So, but he was, I mean, he was just talking about how, how tough it is for, uh, for that, for them now. And that, that he, that he could quite, that he could be censored or killed easily because he's the, the, the he's such the crypto is so good it will replace uh the old systems and the people at the center of the old systems are, are you know are dictators basically now and, and they're not ever going to give it up uh and they'll do anything to keep it basically so so if i you know if, if you if you talk of that way eventually eventually you might get might not get to talk anymore so yeah, Japan is 200% debt to GDP, so it's national jet debt, absolutely. But the United States uh, is getting out of control as well. It's always been, it's always been big, but uh, the last couple of years, it's, been, it's gotten ridiculous. This, this is a, this isn't it, it, absolutely wor- worth saying, as I said, the national debt is, is so huge there. But now it's so huge here as well. And you, it's, it's a question of, what, of how much of a problem that is, so... Lynn Alden, well, I forget, but Lynn Alden, I forget her name. Uh, she's very smart. Uh, I really like Lynn Alden, uh, whatever. She's she got three names, but she just wrote an article on how uh, is the national data problem as well, but I didn't get a chance to finish it. I skimmed it, but uh, I didn't get a chance to finish it. But it, the point is that they're the centralized, they, they, these centralized banks, they print their own money. And then, I mean, they could, they could if, the, if the debt is $100 trillion, they could print a hundred trillion dollars and pay it off. So, you know, it's, it's, is it a problem? I guess, or kind of wouldn't hurt him to do both. So why not? Yeah. The rumble and YouTube. Yeah. Why not? Agreed. Magnificent. YouTube is in the business of censorship, so it can cancel them. If Bud starts complaining of exact the mundu. Yeah. Good to see you, Joe Wakas. Hey, my friend, great to see you. Uh, we need some real action in Saba. Come on, FDA. Come on, Remy. Yeah, it, so the, I, we're, 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 it, it will come because the, the citizens' petition deadline is coming up. And then I, we, we believe the City University of New York investigation is waiting on that. And we know for sure the Journal of Neuroscience uh, expression of concern is waiting on that as well. So uh, it, it, the, there's, there's a bunch of stuff coming. And then we have all sorts of other catalysts as well. CMS, open label, Enrollments, biomarkers, partnerships, uh, all sorts of stuff. Quezzy, my friend, good to see you. Loked, great to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Great to see you, my friend. Prutvi. Prutvi. Hey, Joe, how are you, my friend? I'm good, my friend. Great to see you. If the FDA decision is inconclusive, how is it going to affect the Sava stock price? Inconclusive is fine. The, the, it's, they don't have to, it's, are they going to stop the trials is, is all there. You know, they don't have to, when, when, a, when, a, when a citizen sends a petition in, the FDA doesn't have to say, uh, isn't, isn't obligated to give them a 10 page dissertation of what they think on the matter. But they're, they're in this case, they were asking, sometimes they're asking them to deny uh, approval for a generic. In this case, they're asking them to, uh, it's such ter- in this case, they're, they're you know, in a, an awful way, maliciously asking them, to stop trials, so if there there won't be in, in, well, it won't be like inconclusive. They're not going to say they're not going to do a here's what we think about each of your points. They're just going to uh, say we're not going to. They're almost certainly going to say we're not stopping these trials, and hopefully they say we're sending you to the Federal Trade Commission or something. Unfair business practices. Wakas, only half of viewers have liked the video. Hit the like, people. Uh, thank you very much, Wakas. Thank you very much. And hello, Iman. Iman. Iman, great to see you. I hope you're there. Orion, Charlie 3 will be the Oracle Network for uh, Cardano. Interesting. Oh, Charlie 3. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So remember we, we talked about the concept of an Oracle 
So if you make a smart contract and uh, you want your crops insured, so if hail, if hail destroys your crops, you get paid and uh, you don't want to have to argue with the insurance company and stuff like that. Or yeah, let's just say you make a, you, or no, let's just keep it easier. Let's say there's a drought. So let's say, uh, and, and so, so if there's a drought, you want to get paid and you don't want to argue with the insurance company. So you, you make up this contract and the person that writes a contract with you doesn't have to hire uh, people to go out and investigate whether there's crop damage. You can just say, listen, if there's a drought, uh, or, or depending on how much how much precipitation there is, or depending on how much precipitation there is in this zip code, that's how much we're insuring. If it's below a certain amount, we'll start insuring you up to a certain amount. And and anyway, so then it's like, great, that's a great idea. But then where is, where do you get the official information? How do you who says what the actual information is? And that concept is an oracle. And so again, again, up to until this point, all oracles, like you can go look and look on uh, Yahoo for a stock price. That's an oracle tell you stock. These are all centralized places, but you can make a decentralized oracle that has stock prices that are verified by the community. Yes, that is the correct stock price. So this it's an oracle that's decentralized and it's verified. It verifies the information. So the information is good, but it's not centralized. So that's the concept of an oracle. I was not aware that the oracle that Cardano is uh, for the Cardano network is Charlie three. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you very much. Awesome. Learning. Knowledge. Knowledge is good. Rainer. Hello, Rainer. Uh, somehow I'm starting to get the feeling that the FDA is not going to comment on the citizen's petition, which automatically rejects it. Yep. I mean, they're waiting. They've waited this long, it seems. And then, and yeah, if, if there's liabilities and, and such, then it's easier for them to not comment. Although now that we say that, we know that if they don't comment by the end of the period, the regulation says it's an automatic rejection. We also know the law calls for calls for a response, so a written response. So they actually do have to attend to it at some point in writing. But when we saw the the, the one where they they attended to it and said, not only are we not going to listen to you guys. This look, we're turning you over to an agency that can deal with unfair business practices, the Federal Trade Commission. Yeah. Prosecute unfair business practices. Prosecute unfair business practices. Tom Liu, CCXI, in our trading session, can you see anything there? CCXI, chemocentrics. Well, chemosabi, I like the name of this one already, chemosabi. We'll call this, if we like it, we're going to call it chemosabi. So let's check out Kimosabi, Kimocentrics. Kimosabi. Kimosabi is a biopharma company. Let's see where it is first. San Carlos. So San Carlos, frankly, I'm not sure if that's the San Francisco Silicon Valley uh, biohub that we saw or if that's closer to the San Diego biohub that we saw. I guess it's San Francisco because I lived in San Diego, and I don't recognize San Carlos. Uh, so this biopharma focuses on the development and commercialization of meds targeting inflammatory disorders, auto, autoimmune diseases, and cancer. Okay. Its drugs, its drug candidates are designed to selectively block a specific chemo attractant receptor, leaving the rest of the immune system intact. So there's blocking a specific chemo attractant receptor. The company's lead drug Lead drug candidate, a vacopan, is a potential first-in-class and orally administered molecule that targeted mode of action in the treatment of anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, vasculitis, and other complement-driven autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. The company is also developing a vacopan for the treatment of severe Hurley stage 3 hydronitis suprativa. Its CCX559 is an orally administered inhibitor for program death protein, one program death ligand, PD-1, PDL one which are developed for the treatment of various cancers. All right. And its market cap is about $2 billion. So I was going to say, with a, with, a, with a price around 28 again, does not always mean this, but a price around 28 means we're probably looking at uh, not, not a small cap, so something that's a little bit more mature. So around $2 billion. So... I like, so the autoimmune disorders and the inflammatory, just first of all, inflammatory disorders is just about everything. As we know, Alzheimer's is an inflammatory disorder. As Dr. Apter was telling us, uh, uh, diabetes is an inflammatory disorder. I think we, we, we sort of knew obesity and infl inflammation went together, but diabetes being an inflammatory disorder, that's a big one. And heart disease has an inflammation component for sure. Uh, so that's interesting. Autoimmune and, and inflammatory disorders. They also do cancer, so that, that's good. 
Uh, so only thing I would say is that it's a little bit, it, it's not, it's not, it's certainly not too big. It's 2 billion, but uh, it's not, it's, it's, so it's, it's not a big one. So yeah, yeah I, I, it's, it's small enough. It's not super small, but it's small enough. If you're looking for the home run, home run, it, you know, from 2 billion, you need a really, although those markets it's going after, those are huge, inflammatory, autoimmune, and of course, cancer. So from there, I would want to check out their, the, the, the jockeys. Did they make their patents in-house? Can they keep patenting their chemicals? Can they keep developing, developing them? Or did they in-license these would be my next question. Check out the team. Let's see if they if they talk about their development experience. Okay, we got a founder owner. That's good, Dr. Shaw. You know we like that. So Thomas Shaw. CEO and president was the founder owner. And he's a doctor as well. Came from Genentech. Dr. Shaw participated in, in some of the earliest discoveries of chemokine system function and activities, cloned one of the first chemokines to be discovered and provided some of the earliest data for the existence of the previously unknown family of molecules, which later came to be called the chemokines. Wow. Dr. Shaw's laboratory has have been responsible for the discovery or co-discovery of large percentage of all known chemokine receptors. Dr. Shaw, BS, uh, Northern Illinois University and Stanford and cancer. Okay, so interesting. So he has cancer directly as well. So that answers that as far as do they have the in-house expertise? So this, that, as far as the first uh, hurdle or two for me, they passed that pretty much with flying colors. I wish they were a little bit smaller, a little bit earlier. I wish with, with a founder owner like that, that's sort of exciting like that, it would have been nice to get to the story a little bit earlier before they were a $2 billion company. But that, that passes the first hurdle or two for me, for sure. Kevin, have you tried reaching out to Dr. Wang, probably Dr. Wang? I actually asked uh, if if it was appropriate to have him on, and the answer was probably not, that he's uh, he would he's, he's more of a researcher type than more than a uh, than a on, on camera type. It was well, to, to to paraphrase. So but I did ask about having him on. Rumble, isn't that Trump's thing? Pass. Fair enough. Well, E. Bick is from the Netherlands. Coincidence? That, that's what I figured, Fancy. That, that's what I figured twice. I mean, I'm not even active on Twitter. I, all, I, all I do is, I, I, I do tweet and like, or retweet and like uh, when people in the Discord uh, say stuff, say, check this out, and then, and then I retweet and like. But other than that, I only, I only go one way. I just say, Here, here's the next episode, and then I leave it at that. Uh, I don't, that's not like I'm in there harassing anybody. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Kevin Fox, maybe her parents, <laughs> maybe her parents complain. I mean, the try, they're trying to deplatform. Yeah. I mean, they'll try, they're trying to stop those trials. They're, they'll try anything. Okay. So sister online, whatever. I'm going to ban this. Cause I used to, I used to say, thanks for your, I didn't know what these things were. It turns out they're like adult sites. So you, you, I'm going to go ahead and ban that. Johnny English, you may want to keep an eye on Mister as Bitcoin moves up. Will we'll likely move up uh, with higher beta. Yeah, I, I'm all about that. I'm actually I'm starting to I'm starting to to uh, I'm, I've liked crypto anyway, but but I'm starting to uh, to and I, I think we'll get more of an entry point again because crypto is so volatile. But I'm starting to really like crypto. And you're right. There's and there, if you're gonna play it sort of through the stock market. Rather than hold it directly, remember holding it directly has the, like the, the doomsday uh, scenario characteristic of you know having that security of that. It's sort of like holding gold without having to hold gold. Uh, but yeah, if you, I'm with you, Mister. I, I, I took it off of here. I guess I'll add it back. 
For Johnny English, I'm adding it back. Plus, it's my dog's name, Mr. MicroStrategy. Yeah, they were up over 1,000, so to get them down at 400 something, not too shabby. And uh, so that's Bitcoin maximalist Michael Saylor, who Elon Musk refers to as Sailor Moon. And so if you heard here of maximalism, it's uh, instead of having all these coins, we all got to go to crypto. So we all stay on the same page. And then uh, and then it's like, well, you know what? Crypto or Bitcoin is not very useful. We need these these more useful coins. Well, it's like someone like Michael Saylor will say, OK, well, we'll keep our money in, in Bitcoin. And then when we briefly need to do useful things, we'll switch over to those other networks. And then when we're done, we'll come back to Bitcoin. And maybe that's what the future will be like. Who knows? And then other people say, no, Bitcoin is useless. There's going to be no Bitcoin in the future. It's all going to be the better coins, like maybe Cardano or maybe uh, there's uh, Polkadot or Ethereum or, uh, or uh, the, uh, those are those Cardano, Polkadot, and Ethereum are the same types of networks. So I'll leave those coins together and leave it at that. There's other, there's lots of other types, but those are the same types of coins. I'm not going to say things like Solana or something like that, or Tether or something like that. Silver. But yeah, to finish off with micro strategy, yeah, they buy. They levered up and bought Bitcoin on leverage. So they, that's right. Higher beta, Johnny English. It's it's like buying. And then you could say the same thing perhaps about the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is trading at a discount to the Bitcoin it holds. So if that ever does, sort of sort of like the uh, with Cassava, if, the ever, if it ever does show how many Bitcoin it has, sort of like the Cassava ever shows how many shares it has, then uh, it'll, it should be right at a bit. Not, not as extreme as Cassava. A good point. Silver Charm 2. Did anyone else see the guy from the Department of Justice on Squawk Box with Andrew talking about a company being 150% shorter was okay? Shake my head. Oh, God. I mean, I can't bring myself to watch CNBC. Shake my head is right. Magnificent Rumble is not yet Trump's thing. It's not in the business of censorship, so they'll partner with his uh, Truth Social. Any updates on the interview with Dr. Rojas? I've not had contact with Dr. Rojas. Shame on me. Uh, I, I, the thing I, I, I can't remember, I've reached out to a lot of people. I, I'm not sure if I reached out to her or not. I've tried to get her contact. I can't remember if I reached out to her or not, frankly. I'm not sure. I'll try. I'll get her on. We'll get her on. Well, she should be great to talk to. we got to get her on. I'll get her on. If somebody can help me, I'm, I, frankly, I can't remember if I have her email address or not. If somebody can please help me with that, we'll definitely bring her on. If she, if she wants to, we'll, we'll get her to come on. Marmon Giron, Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme without any value behind it. Uh, I mean, on one hand, I don't disagree. On the other hand, you could say that about, uh, you know, all money, you know. So you could say it about gold. You know, that's the, like, the people will say that's why gold has, you know, it's it doesn't have any utility. Uh, that's why it keeps its value, because when it runs out of utility, it doesn't lose its value. It just keeps its value because people, it's like a prejudice that it has value. So people could stop saying it has value at any time, but you could have said that forever. You could say, you could, and the thing about Bitcoin is for the first time, it, uh, they made the Bitcoin algorithm is it works. So for the first time, you can actually have decentralized money. You, for, like, for the first time, you can have a Ponzi scheme that, uh, where it'll play by the rules. Uh, it, it's not a Ponzi scheme in that you actually get something that can't uh, be diluted, uh, and even gold can be diluted. So on, on one hand, Marmon, it, it's I don't on one hand I don't really disagree, but you could say that about other things in society that are sort of just a prejudice without actual tangible uh, facts behind it, like the value of money, any money, the value of gold, you know, any any you know any precious metal, anything that has value just because and not for its a utility that you can demonstrate. You know. Tom Lu, I'm tempted square, then micro strategy once the Bitcoin trend is firmed. Yeah, micro strategy, yeah. Well, if, if maximalism wins out, then and, uh, switch over to micro strategy. Bitcoin screaming by at 25K, I would say so too. Joe or anyone else, any idea on what different uh, major differences 
are among Mara, Mister, and Riot. I'm not as familiar with Marathon and Riot, uh, Riot Blockchain. I think it's Marathon and Riot Blockchain. Uh, micro, I, I'm just not as familiar with them. I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar with Micro Michael Saylor, uh, Micro Strategy because of Michael Saylor. So somebody else I'm sure will be. Use Adobe Express for your thumbnails. I do. It's free and it will give you the perfect thumbnail size so you won't get the black borders. Plus there are a bunch of templates on it. That's the thing is I do. I Googled make YouTube thumbnail. I get Adobe uh, to do it and I use it. And I don't know, on some, depending where you look, on the thing is it couldn't possibly work in everything because depending where you look, the sizes are different. So even on YouTube itself, uh, I thought well, on, on maybe on YouTube, itself, on YouTube itself, if you look at like the videos, you see one thumbnail. But if you go on like Twitter and you, you post a link to the, the video or if you go on LinkedIn and post a link to it, then it's a different size. So the, the sizes, they're really, I, just, I don't know what to do about that. But you get black borders still. Well, thank you for telling me. I'll just have to, I'll just, I'll just have to download a different size. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. But I, yeah, that's the thing is I do. I use, I use a, a, a little uh, Adobe applet specifically for making YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> so, you know. Marmon Garon, Joe, check out Occupire. It has three drugs in phase three and two data readouts expected during this quarter. Dirt cheap at fit 56 million and cash until mid 23. That sounds very dirt cheap. Occupire Wall Street. So they just raised money. They had, they had, I don't know what happened here. They got a million back, but we have 9 million, 8 million, 10 million, but then 24 million down to 22 million. So they've got a little bit of money. Uh, and if they're, if they've got readouts of phase three, that's pretty wild. They are in Michigan. So I guess we'll call that the, uh, the Midwest where there were, there was room to manufacture and has a lot of universities. They were saying, Clinical stage ophthalmolic. So as people get older, it's going to be a lot more eye disease. So that, that's a good thing in general. Commercializing uh, eye disorders, two small molecules for front and back of the eye indications. Eye drops, once daily preservative free drop formulation of fentomaline, fento, fent fentalamine, Fentalamine Macillate designed to reduce pupil diameter and improve visual acuity. Nyxol is being developed for several indications, including dim light or night vision disturbances, reversal of pharmacologically induced mydriasis, and presbyopia. Its second product candidate is a twice-a-day oral tablet designed to inhibit angiogenesis and infl inflammation pathways relevant to retinal and corneal vascular diseases such as diabetic retinopathy, diabetic macular edema, and it's pre okay, you got a couple preclinical candidates as well, 50 million. So it's trading for uh, more than double its cash. So it does have a small premium. It's still, it's still less than 60 million. It's 50 million market cap. Like IKT actually trades for less than cash. Right now with the biotech stocks being so decimated, they're actually, a lot of them, they're actually going for less than cash. So that it's, it's trading with, with a bit of a, and not, you know, it's not being discounted by the market, a bit of a, like, so you, as you say, they're so close to market. And on one hand, those, those indications seem so small. So how many people, have you ever heard of anybody complaining that their pupils are too large? Like, uh, oh, my, my poor, uh, my poor grandmother, her, her pupils are too large. <laughs> I never heard anybody complain about that. And I mean, night vision, I mean, so that's, it's not, so that, that's not the dumb, that's not, I mean, to put those indications down. I just, I just mean to say they're not humongous. Like everybody's going to get Alzheimer's disease. I don't know if everybody's going to get two big pupils in their eyes. So, uh, so uh, that's it's, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. Fifty six million. The next thing we got to see is uh, do they are they do they have a uh, uh, founder owner, Did, and do they have the expertise in house to do these patents, and what is their patent situation in general?
Uh, ooh, partnerships. Let's see who they partner with. I didn't see that. So Rexon. Okay, so they got they got their. So as part of Rexon merger transaction, several oncology product candidates developed by Rexon had established licensing agreements with Biosense and Hai Chang. Prior Rexon shelters may receive to do. So does that mean that they got that they got their uh, intellectual property from somebody else and did not develop it in house? I think that might mean that. That's okay. Again, we prefer that they have the expertise to develop their stuff in house. So Mina, so vice chair of the board and CEO, the fact that she's not the chair means she's probably not the founder. Again, that's fine. But remember, we get a, you can get a sustainable competitive advantage when you have a founder owner. A, uh, the best employees are not a competitive advantage because if they're that good, somebody else will pay them and take them. You have to pay them more up until the point where they're not worth it anymore. And so it's not actually a competitive advantage to have the better people except for a founder owner. So one, so it's not bad. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad to not have a founder owner, but it seems like this one does not have a founder owner. And it's not necessarily bad to license the, uh, uh, but it's just better to have a founder owner. It's not necessarily bad not to have them, but it's better to have one. And it's not necessarily bad to license the patents from outside, but it's better to have the wherewithal, the, the expertise to do it inside. So it seems like this one is not fit into those categories. I don't hate it by any stretch, but there's like 400 to 600 uh, developmental biotechs in the U.S. market. So I'm going to, well, I, I like sticking with the founder owners and, and developing the, the intellectual property in-house. Not to say that one is bad, but that one does not have those characteristics. But it seems all right. Seems okay, though. And then the name O-Cup. I kind of like the name O-Cup. <laughs> That's a pretty good name. Oak up. Are shells a Ponzi scheme? People pay for them the second they are arranged as art and put in some uh, well-to-do shop. Yeah. That's a good comment, Ryan. Uh, Johnny, Riot and Mara are miners. MicroStrategy is a software company holding Bitcoin. Okay, I didn't realize that. I knew they held Bitcoin. I knew they were buying it leveraged on the mar uh, in the dark in, on the market. But... Uh, I didn't realize they were a software. I thought they were a miner as well. And so Riot and Mera are miners. Thank you, Johnny English. I didn't realize that. Tom Lu, keep Fisk as money market with 11%. If NAS up, uh, park money in Queeld. <laughs> well, all right. Let's just see what FSK is. So I guess this might be a preferred note of a uh, KKR. Is that a business development company? So this might be a preferred of a business development company. I don't know, is that why the yield is so high? So yield of 11%, that's definitely not qualified and possibly preferred being that high. But hey, thank you for bringing it to our attention. No profile for that. Is KKR, is that a business development company? Global Investment Company, Alternative Asset Management, Investment Funds, Private Equity. So it's, no, it is not. It's an investment company, but not a business development company. But it does look like that must be a preferred with that high yield. So my so, not my uh, risk tolerance to be in a preferred that wouldn't have upside necessarily, but an interesting one if you're looking for looking for some yield. If you're looking for yield, the market's just not really offering a whole lot of yield. So a few things to do. One, uh, if you read in the Tendies Commandments, you can get my book, The Tendies Commandments: Guide to Crushing the Market. If you 
uh, subscribe to uh, the newsletters. You can get the Discord. So look look below in the in the description. You can subscribe and get the Discord, the book. Anyway, one thing: if you're looking for a yield, the market's just not wanting to give it. So if you're getting some, you're probably giving something up. Uh, and so, yeah, like a preferred has no real upside. That you're not really probably going to get any appreciation. And some of these preferreds can get called. So right as things are looking good for you, then get, they, 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 you can get called away. Anyway, so a, a master limited partnership is a different type of structure, a tax structure. And so people, uh, institutions don't buy them at all or cover them for that reason. So, and they're, uh, they're also complicate your tax situation. So you, you get a K2 you have, so that uh, when you get your really high yields, it's a return of capital. So you don't pay any tax on it at all. Uh, for the like, if you invest a hundred thousand dollars for the first hundred thousand dollars you get back, you don't pay any tax on it at all. But it's a little more complicated for your taxes. So because it's a little more complicated for your taxes, and it's just a different tax structure, institutions don't buy it, and individuals stay away from it. So anyway, that's what you're giving up there. It's you know, it's not as simple, but it's a better investment, generally speaking. That tax stru structure pushes people away. So a similar underlying investment is generally going to be a better value, right, in an MLP because there's just less demand for it. So something like that, uh, you and then anyway, the, and then so the MLP is an interesting one if you're looking for high yield, and then yield in general is really good as well because then you know your shares are real, or you know that the people that are shorting shares are paying for it. They they can't make these phantom shares and destroy everything without paying for it. And they just don't do that in companies that pay dividends. Uh, and so so this, so if you look for so if you're gonna so a yield then look for growth. So a, a good investment, a good a good. Uh, successful dividend paying stock a good successful investment in one is gets a better return and because if things are good for the company the equity appreciates more than the dividend than the four percent you get a year in dividend if it's a good company you get a ten percent return a year in, a, in a, a good dividend paying stock that's doing well 10 or 15. so anyway if you're looking for looking for uh the market just want to doesn't want to give up yield so look for good uh as i describe in length in the guide to crushing the market look for good companies Heck, it's my show, guys. We're reading my book. I'm going to read that part. I'm going to read that chapter to you. You get a free look at the book. It's my show, and I'm going to read my book to you and tell you what I think about uh, what you should do when it comes to dividend-paying stocks. It's my show, and I'll read my book if I want to. Read my book if I want to. Read my book if I want to. You would read the Tendies Commandments, too, if you had it. Do-do-do-do. And I've got to get this thing easier to pull up. I've got so many darn files these days. The Tendies Commandments, Guide to Crushing the Market. There we are. All right, so there's the 10... Uh, the 10 Tendies Commandments. So the Tendies Commandments, Tendies, if you didn't know, it's slang for profits made on investments. So the first commandment is, Thou shalt beat the market... Second commandment is thou shalt buy ten baggers. The third commandment is thou shalt buy compounder, compounders. So that's where we'll, that's where we're going. Thou shalt buy compounders. So when it comes to the dividend paying stocks, so why should you beat the market? Because of flexibility. You have that where in institutions don't. You have patience. Institutions don't. And you have small dollars. Institutions don't. That's why you should beat the market. And buying ten baggers. This is where we go into. Uh, there's biotech there where we talk about uh, the founder owners, talk about the intellectual property, insiders, follow the insiders, uh, uh, the, and the undiscovered. We get into there also the, the going, getting the intellectual, having the wherewithal to be uh, to get the patents in house as well. And then here's the third commandment: Thou shalt buy compounders. So growth stocks are great, but not everything has to be a home run. Stocks of companies that are already profitable can compound for years and achieve our goals. That sounds good too. The Tendies gods identify three keys when looking for a good compounder or value stock. Disfavored, reinvestment, and sustainable competitive advantages. So disfavored stocks. Dividends are terrific. What could be better than owning a portion of a business and sitting back collecting profits? Nothing. Nothing. So it can be a crowded trade. And that's what we're talking about here. Dividends are a crowded trade. Or high yield is a crowded trade because everybody wants it. Worse than being a crowded trade, executives often pay unwarranted dividends to buoy the share price and compensate themselves. Then when times get tough, as was exposed with COVID, they must cut the dividend, tanking the stock. 
And while qualified dividends are tax advantaged, long-term capital gains on stock sales enjoy the very same treatment. Selling a portion of a business after one year that retains its profits is virtually the same as receiving a dividend. Yield is fine too, but it attracts investors that may bid up the share price and should be deprioritized. Instead, we should look for profitable stocks that are a good value and are going to go up whether or not they pay a dividend. And then let's talk about reinvestment. Sounds like a good plan, buy a profitable business and go to sleep, but there is no firm ground on which to sleep. All stocks can get cut in half or go to zero. The examples are a who's who of the most highly regarded stocks of all time. Bear Stearns, Enron, Exxon, GE, GM, Kraft Heinz, Lehman Brothers, and many more. No stock is a CD or treasury. No stock will ever be safe. So we must get aggressive and have good reason for our profitable value stocks to outperform. Even though these stocks have a bit of safety in their current profits, we must envision innovation coming to take what exists and have good reason for the company to be successful tomorrow. Look for companies that don't buy back shares at all-time highs or pay out extravagant, extravagant dividends in good times, but rather shrewdly reinvest capital into additional growth opportunities. And then sustainable competitive advantages. We saw that founders and intellectual property can offer sustainable competitive advantages in growth stocks. Again, here in, in Compounders, those same advantages apply as well as these four. Customer captivity. Here is a sustainable competitive advantage. If there is a high cost or risk for customers to switch to a competitor, then a business can enjoy high margins and customer retention. Many people would lose hundreds of songs leaving Apple or would not risk leaving their doctor at any price. Irreplaceable assets is another competitor, sustainable competitive advantage. Having the best mines, quarries, or real estate can be insurmountable for, comp for competitors, again, making cap for captive customers and high margins. Regulation. Society and government is more litigious, environmentally conscious, and risk-averse than in previous de decades. There are many hazardous or questionable permits in effect that would be very hard to replicate today. Companies disposing of nuclear waste, Gas stations with permits to do business and utilities burning coal are examples. And then proprietary products. It's hard for customers to leave for a competitor when a company makes its own products. Many examples here from much of the consumer discretionary sector to numerous big tech giants. All right. So... I'm going to see if we gained or lost people on that. We lost people. So reading, reading the people, you lose people. Leaving the charts up, people, people tune in. So <laughs> we lost some people reading the, reading the book. We lost some people. But thank you for the people that stuck, that stuck here. Cassava recovers back over 47. Ryan Ocup, my wife is an optometrist and hates the eye drops. Better stuff available. No intel, intel on the stuff in trial. Thank you for that, Ryan. Jim L., good afternoon, Joe. Any thoughts on Biden's nomination for FDA? Yes, uh, better than, uh, than Woodcock, for gosh sakes. So, uh, and there's a Daiichi Sanyo connection. Not a, not a strong one, but uh, this person only got like little bits of money doing consulting work in uh, the, bio, the, 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 bio, the private, private industry. And, but da Daiichi Sanyo was one of the companies that uh, he consulted with. So I can't remember his name. And of course, he's in bed with uh, Big Pharma. What else is new? So I, I, I just, I just, even though, there's, it, on one hand, very problematic because he's in bed with Big Pharma. On the other hand, I, I mean, it's, it seems to me it's about as good as you're going to do. So I, I, hope, I, I hope he gets confirmed, frankly, because uh, right now, the acting commissioner is Janet Woodcock, which is terrible. So. Marmon, Ryan, I'm just playing the data readout. Last year, the stock jumped over 150% on phase three readout and pre-market. Thank you, Johnny English. Bootcamp, interesting biotech TIFF with many shots on goal. TIFF with many shots on goal. TIFF.
active. All right, let's check out Tiff. Austin, hey Austin. So we got, I got, an, we got an Austin-based one. This one is 143 million. So that's a market cap I really like. So that that's the area we're looking for. Hundreds of millions, low hundreds of millions, really good. So biotech in Austin, developing, commercializing thin film freezing technology platform, TFF platform designed to enable salability of poorly water soluble drugs. Its drug candidates include TFF voriconazole inhalation powder, TFF tacrimiculus inhalation powder, and triple combination. It's developing TFF VIP to treat invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, a severe fungal pulmonary disease. TFF VIP is being developed as an inhaled dry powder drug. It is developed, uh, developing TFF tip, a dry powder version of tacrimosis. Okay, the one thing I will say, oh, and a monoclonal antibody as well, an inhaled monoclonal antibody, interesting. And 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 then and then they get into cannabis cannabis as well, CBD, interesting. So it seems uh, the one thing I, I don't necessarily that inhaling a dry powder like that, I don't know, uh, man, uh, man, mankind had that for uh, uh, with technosphere and insulin. And uh, Jim Cramer had Alfred Manon, who was a, a, one of the best philanthropists in the world, and uh, just uh, basically yelled at the poor old man who didn't know what he was in for. Uh, and and they, the, the shorts, they really had a time with that one. One thing they got the doctors to do was say you needed a, to get like a lung test before you could get this. So, in this, so that, that, that my guess is you're going to need to, the, 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 I forget what it was, what kind of lung test you had to get, but that, that's my one thing there is that are they going to, and basically destroyed mankind. The, the product was needed, it seemed. The product was needed and it worked and it was well received. Like the people liked it. But then you had to go get like, so like pulmonary tests first before you were allowed to use it. So that kind of destroyed that one. So that would be my my uh, worry on that one. Ryan, Marmon Jaron on Hope the Price Action Works Out for you. Just sharing some intel. Silver, hey Joe, there's a biomedical engineer who has a channel on YouTube called Health Wealth, and he is long Saba and has done some good de due diligence on QCM three days ago. Good to know. Health Wealth, thank you very much. Polypid, P -P -Pid, market cap 79 million, Israeli company with potential blockbuster product near phase three. Kathy Wood has over 400,000 shares. I think it's a big, great buying up. If Kathy Wood found it already, it's sort of out of the bag. Let's see what they do. Sixty nine million market cap. New locally administered therapies to improve surgical results. Plex technology, which is located in the place of surgery and ensures controlled and continuous delivery of medicines. That doesn't tell us very much. So not really a biotech. This looks more like a device company, I guess. It's not necessarily bad. And they're switching CEOs. That was the first thing I, when we first landed on the site, it looked like they had a lot of press releases. And that is sort of a, a bit of a watch out. The first, when you land here, when we first landed on the main page, didn't it first bring up like a whole bunch of press releases that it then, I guess, pushed to the bottom? Maybe not. Was I seeing things? But anyway, uh, the CEO transition. In a small developmental company, seeing the CEO leave, not too good.
Amir Weisberg serves as CEO, will direct a transition with Miss. Uh, so he's been there live on behalf. Okay. Okay, so it looks like what well, looks like this person was it's like an amicable uh, decision there. So I guess that's not necessarily bad. Still, that's different than being led by a founder owner. And let's see if they have partnerships. I guess partnership opportunities is not as good as partnerships. They would be delighted to consider the following collaboration opportunities. So they look, look I mean, they're, they're early. Uh, frankly, I don't know enough about them. They're, they don't, they, they're not a biotech and they don't have a founder owner. So I'll probably pass. But I've, there's, not, there's not really many device companies I've gotten behind, I don't think. But interesting. Interesting, but not really what we're looking for as far as biotechs led by founder owners and able to... Uh, do the your, the uh, the intellectual property in house, but thank you for bringing it up. I don't dislike it. Jay Joe, not sure if the science used in citizen petitions is the same as in Biogen's Aduhelm. However, if it is, knowing it hurt killed patients no better than placebo. I'll bet the FDA won't say a word. Let the citizen petition expire. So no, it's completely different. So Aduhelm. And now Lily has donanemumab, and now Roche has one as well. They all basically work the same way. They're all monoclonal antibodies that go in there and attach to plaques, uh, amyloid beta plaques, uh, and then uh, transport them away. They uh, and so they and they do a good job of it. And so it's like I guess that'll fix Alzheimer's. Not only does it not fix Alzheimer's, there's bleeding left behind in the brain. Uh, so it doesn't help, and it hurts. Uh, and this is just a uh, semifilam with uh, cassava is binding to a misfolded protein. Uh, and then it's uh, stopping tau uh, tangles. It's stopping the, the toxic cascade from there upstream of tau tangles. So it's a different method of action, mechanism of action completely. And it, the safety profile is outstanding in addition to excellent uh, efficacy. So, so thank you. We need Kathy to pick up some saba. I know... Comments on the offering of IKT. Uh, so I commented on, they didn't do an offering yet, but they filed to eventually do one, which we know they eventually will. So they had to file eventually. We spoke to, we uh, uh, Milton, Dr. Werner uh, spoke about, uh, at length about, you know, how much money they have and when they would raise and whatever. Eventually they had to file to, to do that. Mark, as NAS goes, red looks like Sava wants to go green. So as the NASDAQ goes red, the Sava's going green. Now let's, let's check out GameStop A, A all. GameStop A all is also recovering. So GameStop was down and uh, AMC. So AMC stayed down 3%, but GameStop recovered back to about even as Cassava recovers. So interesting that uh, they're trading together. Cassava and the meme stocks, the the powers that be kept trying to link Cassava with the meme stocks, but uh, there seems it seems like they are trading with them now. So, all right, Tendies, friendies, this was a nice long one. That's what she said. Uh, we'll have another great episode uh, tomorrow at noon. Uh, thanks so much for being here, and I uh, will see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow.